Hi, it's Mr. Kane here again, and as it says, we're going to have a little video about mixtures, all sorts of different things we can learn about them and what we can do with them. So, in the lab we brew up all sorts of stuff, some are mixtures and some are chemical compounds, we're going to learn the difference. We're focusing on mixtures. It's all to do with what's in there, the types of matter we're dealing with. Now, we've got pure stuff that's only one kind of matter, so there's a bar of gold, wouldn't we love to have one of those in our bags? That's only one thing in there, so it's pure. Mixture, there's more than one kind of thing. And there's a mixture. That's what we here in uh, New Zealand call scroggin. A bunch of yummy stuff to munch on when you're going tramping or hiking in the hills here, in the mountains, in the bush. It gives you a bit of energy and keeps you going. It's a mixture of all sorts of yummy stuff put together. So let's look at some mixtures. So it's two or more things all put together. And how much of each thing in the mixture varies. So you know, air or concrete or what we've got here, lipstick. What their, their ingredients, their recipe is always different. And the amounts, the proportions is also different. So there's our scroggin mix again. Have a look in that. The amounts of things are all different. There's probably a few more nuts in there than there are raisins and M&Ms and whatever else that we can find in there. So the, the proportions in a mixture vary. So we've got two types. And there's some big words. We've got homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures. Let's try those again. Homogeneous and heterogeneous. So what on earth does that mean? Let's have a look. So heterogeneous mixtures. Okay, Wherever you look, it's not going to be the same. It's going to be different in all sorts of different places. So if I take a sample one place, it's different from somewhere else. There's a good example. That looks like a delicious kind of a salad. Green stuff in there. I can see some red onion. I can see some, looks like blue cheese. Looks like yellow capsicum. Oh, that looks like a bit of garlic in there as well. That looks like an interesting salad. Might make my breath a bit stinky, but that looks delicious. Here's another heterogeneous mixture, probably a bit more to your liking. Blue ones and red ones and green ones and yellow ones and orange ones and brown. So heterogeneous, all sorts of different things mixed together. You can see the different bits and pieces in the mixture. So that leaves us with homogeneous. Everything's the same. Wherever you go, it's always the same. All the stuff that make it up are super evenly spread out. It's always the same wherever you look in it. There we go. There's a homogeneous mixture. Could be water. Could be something else you like to drink. But wherever, look, wherever I look in that mixture, it's the same. There's a uh, mixture of drink we've made up. It says Kool-Aid. Here in New Zealand you might think of Raro being dissolved into the water. Wherever you go in that glass, it's going to be the same. It's a homogeneous mixture. All the same wherever we look at. Uniform. Phases. Okay. Remember phases of matter? Yes? No? Maybe? Okay. Well, this is what we're talking about. So, any part of the mixture with the same properties, same stuff, we call it a phase. So, let's have a look. Homogeneous, only one. It's the same everywhere, so it only be one phase. So heterogeneous will have more. Uh, let's have a look. So here's a, oh, it's like chicken soup. So in the chicken soup, we've got solid phase stuff. I can see lumps of chicken. I can see bits of, looks like pumpkin or carrot. Celery in there. Oh, I'm not so sure about celery in the soup. And then there's the liquid phase of the soup as well. That's the broth that it's resting in. If it was bubbling like bubbling hot, we could say there's a gas phase as well. So the phases are what it's made out of, solid, liquid, or gas. There's a homogeneous mixture. It's just the one phase. In this case, it looks like chocolate milk. So it's the same everywhere I go. Everywhere I go in that glass, just chocolate. Rightio. Now, because they aren't chemically stuck together, we can use the different properties, so the, the things they have, the solid parts, the liquid parts, the different things, we can use it to separate them, if we want to, only if we need to. But that does present some challenges about how to go about doing that. So, here's an example. I've got some iron filings and aluminium filings. 
I want to get them apart. How do I go about doing that? So I've got a it's a problem. I've got to figure out how am I going to get them apart. So I'm thinking about it. I'm going to look for some things that they have that are different, some properties that are different that I can use to get them apart. So let's have a look. What have we got? Iron. It's a metal. Aluminium. Ah, it's a metal, so it doesn't work. They're both metals. Okay. Iron's grey. Aluminium. That's greyish too. That doesn't help. Uh, what's next? Oh, doesn't dissolve in water. Right. Ah, aluminium's the same. Okay, not doing so good so far. Okay, iron. Attracted to a magnet. Aluminium. Not. Aha, boom, we've got it. So if we're going to use a magnet, we can pull the iron apart from the aluminium. So we're making use of some, a property that's differentiates and it's different between them so we can use a magnet to pull the iron filings away from the aluminium so because the magnet tracks the iron the iron's going to be taken away aluminium's left behind and so magnetism works magnetism would be our separating technique we would use um, there's a picture of salt and iron but the same technique the irons get pulled out leaves the salt behind okay let's try something different sand and sugar. How are we going to get those apart? Don't think magnetism is going to work here. Let's think about what properties, what's something that one does but the other doesn't. So like for example there's a mixture, in this case we can use colours but sand and sugar, hmm, a bit too similar in colour usually, sort of the white sand and white sugar. Oh, I know there's golden sand beaches and stuff but it's, well, it must be something else we can use. What are we going to do? Okay. Ha! If we add water, we can dissolve the sugar. Sand doesn't dissolve. It'll just sit there. So then we can tip the sugary water off the sand. It's called decanting. It's like when you finish cooking the, uh, the peas in the pot and you tip the water off and leave the peas behind. That's decanting. Then we get hold of that sugar water and we heat it all to the water boils away. The water evaporates away and we're left with the crystals behind. Well, don't heat it too much, you'll burn the sugar. That's called crystallizing. So we dissolve the whole lot, we tip the water off, and then we crystallize it. So we got sand out of, the, out of the water stuff, and then we got the sugar crystals back at the end. Well, we heat the sand and dry it off, and we've got the uh, sand nice and dry as we started with. Okay, so we separated the things. Oh, tap water. Hmm, how are we going to do that? Distillation. What on earth is distillation? So we boil a liquid, we turn it into a gas, and then we turn it back into a liquid again. That's distillation. Often we use this when we're separating two different liquids, usually of different boiling points. So here we go. We've got salt water in the flask at that, uh, one end here. And what's going to happen here? So we've got our flask. This is the flask here. We've got salt water in the flask. And we're heating it with the Bunsen burner, so we've got heat going up here. And that's going to turn to a gas, and the gas rises up here, and the gas goes into what's called the condenser. And the gas goes down the middle of the condenser. And around the outside of the condenser, we've got cooling water coming in. We've got water coming in here, and going out there. So we've got gas going this way. And water going that way. Well, that's going to be a bit messy. Let's clear that up a bit. So, the where are we? The gas goes down the centre, but the water is coming up and going this way. So there's a counter current flow. So what happens is the gas that goes down the middle condenses and drops out the bottom back into the flask. In this case, I get distilled water out, pure water, and I leave the salt stays behind. Now, this is also called crystallizing. We'll crystallize the salt into here, but we'll recondense the water back over here instead of letting it evaporate away. So, this is sort of crystallizing and condensing. Not strictly speaking, distillation. If we had two different liquids in here, if I had a mixture of, let's say, um, alcohol and water, then the alcohol boils at a lower temperature, say around about 70 degrees in the water. And the water boils at 100. So if I heat this up to my thermometer, it's saying 70. Okay. Then 
and keep it around about 70 then the alcohol will disappear off down here cool down and I'll get instead of distilled water I'll get alcohol down the far end of it okay and that's how I distill alcohol and other things so that's distillation all right what have we done so far we've seen distillation magnetism dissolving decanting crystallizing right what else have we got so filtering and sieving yeah that's pretty straightforward you know to filter stuff out filter muck out sieving is moving bigger chunks than the filter does chromatography let's break that word up into something so chroma is to do with color graphy pictures color photography you know, think the idea so we're using colors to separate stuff there we might look at that in more detail later on um, the order they're going to be using is important too so magnetism when it works when things are dry and stuff like that. so what are you going to do first it's all, all kind of important um, lots of other methods as well um, if you watch those CSI programs on TV NCIS and all those sorts of things in their lab they've got a lab tech working hard away separating things out and um, separating mixtures of stuff and they'll use machines that have big long names like a mass spectrometer and a gas chroma chromatograph and stuff like that they're all to separate fancy ways to separate our mixtures and figure out what you're going to do so here's a problem for you iron nails salt and water how are you going to go about fix mixing that up no it's already mixed up how are you going to go about getting it apart okay so I'll leave that with you and um, I hope you found this thing about mixtures informative and I'll leave that challenge with you and hopefully you have some success Go home and try it out. Okay, think about what physical properties are you going to base your method on.